The purpose of this video is to provide a flavor of the kind of spatially resolved model that can be routinely programmed and simulated on personal computers. In some situations, spatial isolation can increase the ability of a system to support the coexistence of distinct subpopulations. Consider annual plants that can occupy the vertices of a square lattice. This toy model will include two types of plants. We are the plant at the site at the center. We are yellow. How do our interactions with our neighbors influence our ability to make seeds for the next generation? In a format reminiscent of our discussion of evolutionary game theory, this model uses a matrix indicating that if we are a yellow plant and we have a yellow neighbor, we receive payoff R. Let's label the other type of plant blue. The remaining three payoffs possible are labeled S, T, and P. For example, by interacting with a blue neighbor to our north, we get a payoff of S. Our interactions to the east, south, and west provide payoffs of R, R, and S, respectively. For simplicity, we will only consider interactions between nearest neighbors for now. The sum of these payoffs S, R, R, and S are combined for a total payoff that we can invest in the production of seeds at the end of the generation. As illustrated explicitly for our four neighbors, the other sites in the system have also accumulated total payoffs that they can invest to produce seeds of their own. Seeds will be dispersed from a plant into the five sites comprising the site of origin and its nearest neighbors. For clarity, only the portion of the seeds that will be blown into the center site is illustrated. That means that each plant actually makes five times as many seeds as illustrated. In this case, there are more blue seeds than yellow seeds collected at the center site. This determines the type of plant that will occupy that site in the next generation. Suppose that the seeds of different types of plants are mutually toxic, sterilizing each other one seed of one type for one seed of the other type. After pairs of seeds have canceled out, an excess of unsterilized blue seeds survives in this example, so the center site is occupied by a blue plant during the next generation. The same kind of so-called winner-takes-all process determines the type of plant that will occupy the other sites in the lattice. Spatially resolved plant populations for the model we have described are animated to the left. Using the same initial distribution of plant types on the lattice, we also perform computer simulations with different interaction ranges. Interactions and seed dispersal occur over nearest and diagonal nearest neighbors in the animation in the middle. In the animation to the right, interactions and seed dispersal occur over the entire lattice. Using the set of parameters TRPS in the fine print at the bottom of the screen, the global model is quickly dominated by blue plants, but the spatially resolved model, with interactions restricted to nearest neighbors, displays coexistence. Rather than merely containing a tessellation of miniature copies of a corresponding globally mixed model, local regions in a spatially resolved model can look different from each other and look different from the solution for the global model. For more information on winner-takes-all type models, see the article in Nature by Nowak and May from 1992.